Welcome my friends to part one of my strategy guide to the Hunter and the Beast DLC. In this two part video series, we're gonna be talking about strategies and synergies that really stood out to me in multiplayer as well as campaign. So on that note guys, let us begin with the first strategy, which is gonna be the Marcus Goon Squad. So Marcus Wolfhart, the namesake of the DLC, the Hunts Marshal himself, is by far one of the best snipers in the game. Incredibly powerful with two sniping abilities, one being Focus Shot and the second being his item, which is the Amber Bow. He's able to do massive burst damage and that alone can bring many Lords down to like 50%, 40%. Some of the bigger Lords will go down to like 60 or 70, but still that is huge value. Now the items do have a very long cooldown of two minutes, but you're still gonna get your money's worth for the most part. I mean, they can be juked, so if you're playing against very you know high level foes who are very aware and are paying attention they can dodge these shots and really mitigate a lot of his effectiveness but even his regular shots which are quite frequent have 556 missile damage great ap values and 180 range and a bonus for large you can't really complain now where marcus starts to get really nasty i've noticed in a couple of the battles is when you have marcus you bring an amethyst wizard and it can be on any sort of amount honestly the amethyst wizard can be on a war horse but you know just for the sake of this test he is going to be on a pegasus on top of that, you bring a Bright Wizard, and the Bright Wizard is going to be bringing Fireball, which, from what I can tell, has been nerfed in this DLC. I don't think it does as much damage, and it doesn't seem as accurate. But nonetheless, to further accentuate Marcus's gooning abilities, it is very good. Lastly, we're going to be bringing the Hammer of the Witches, and obviously, for this you know test and the video series in general, we're not going to be bringing full armies. We're just going to be kind of showing you the vacuum synergies, and then you guys can bring it with your full armies for the most part, and that can vary depending on what your opponent brings. Or what faction he's playing so even with just this little goon squad we still have 7644 left and i have them on expensive bounce as well so you could actually have probably close to 8000 left to spend so in this test we're going to be going up against lord skrulk obviously empire versus skaven is a you know so they're one of your your foes right and uh, skaven are a very competitive faction so this is just showing the potential of what you can do against a skaven player sniping their leadership and perhaps a big monster before they can even get to you but we'll find out so we're going to be on mp crossroads and let us jump right into the first test so it's going to be Skrulk Daddy with his Help and Abomination facing off against the Hunts Marshal here on MP Crossroads. And again, this is going to be a two-part video series, so we're going to be doing uh, probably three or four you know, big synergies. So this first video is going to be focusing mainly on the Empire, and the second video we'll be focusing on the uh, Dinosaurs. So we're just going to kind of set up here. Obviously, you would have your army normally and just be set up all over the map here. But we have the, the Bright Wizard here who's going to be up on his uh, Flying Mount, which gives him a better Arc of Fire, and Marcus can be leading the charge here. So this is like something that's not that hard to bring, right? There's a couple resources invested and you could even go without the cannon. Like it's not a big deal. And there are some matchups in which having artillery isn't that great. But in this situation, we're going to be bringing the artillery. So the first one to pay the troll toll is going to be Skrulk Daddy, I think. Uh, although we could go with the Helpit Abomination just to see like how you know quickly we can goon that thing down. I think that could be good. So we'll go for the Helpit first. So firstly, let's get him going. Let's get Marcus running up there and we'll get this wizard and this wizard running up there as well. The whole crew is, uh, you know, coming back to town. So the Helpit Abominations marching at the army. Now, Helpits aren't a super common pick, but basically I just, or in this matchup, but I just want to show you guys the potential here. So Hammer, Hammer the Witches is going to start shooting. Marcus is going to go in with his bow and his regular attacks, and also the snare net if, if things do get a little bit messy and we need to kind of slow them down a little bit. I think I gave Skrulk some spells on accident, so he's probably going to be dropping some annoying summons here, but you know, such is life. So firstly, let us begin with our Hunter shots coming in here. We're going to be dropping a Spirit Leech on the Helpit and also a Fireball at a pretty close range here. So we're going to start getting some damage. So hopefully the Hammer of the Witches will hit and boom, the first volley coming in and the Amber Bow is going to be coming in as well. And this is a very expensive piece. This is a Hellpit Abomination. Now we've already done like a couple thousand damage. If this were against like, you know, uh, you know any anything else really that wasn't as big, that would just be crazy, right? So now we've already gotten some pretty big damage on this character and Marcus can start shooting with his bow. Now this is a Hellpit. If I had other accentuating resources like Huntsman or characters like that, this thing would just be getting karate chopped into the Shadow Realm. So the Hammer of the Witches is shooting in. It's probably gonna break here in a moment. Marcus does have fleet footed. So when he's getting chased by such a beast, he actually gets a little bit of a speed buff, which is quite nice. And the fireball is gonna be ready again. So imagine if like you could do so much like on the approach against any number of targets this can be against like uh you know their, their lords like a big valuable monster you need to take out marcus of course is doing damage as he's running here and you're gonna have spirit leeches so you could honestly just have like a full kite army and just be kiting and just have marcus doing this and have nets and on top of that you could have like uh you know a multitude of other effects that could be very powerful so the help it's going to be going down rather quickly here i mean even with too horrible to die it's going to be broken and it should be completely taken care of so at this point scroll's pretty much the only threat left so what we'll do is we'll just kind of punt Skrulk with our uh, Amethyst Wizard back and forth and uh, just kind of butter him up for the uh, adventure that's to come. So the Hammer of the Witches is going to keep shooting at the Hellpits just to make sure that thing doesn't come back. And oh, look at Skrulk summoning some rats here. Just just trying to make this test difficult. Of course, you know, uh, it's, it's not going to work, Skrulk. So Skrulk already is just getting auto-shotted and he's like going down incredibly quickly, right? So we're just basically going to wait and just play some Benny Hill until uh, the freaking... Uh, the, uh, our cooldowns are off, so of course we do have our uh, both of our shots here, and uh, the help it should break here. It's shaken, not stirred, negative four leadership. That should be enough to kind of uh, butter his bread, and the rats should be disappearing here in a matter of seconds because they are a summon unit. And down goes the big boy. 
So Skrulk, we're going to kind of kite him this general direction, and you guys are going to kind of get to see the picture of like what kind of damage we can do here. And it looks like he's broken again. Summon rats will be disappearing shortly, but we don't even need this artillery piece, so we're just going to bring this guy over here. And uh, we do have the net, and the amber bow are going to be coming down, so we'll drop a fireball here, we'll drop a spirit leech, we'll overcast it just to get the range. We'll drop the net, boom, he's netted, and we just get the focus shot. And like the alpha strike potential is pretty insane. So that's pretty good damage right on a Skaven Lord. Fireball has incredible range. So does overcasted uh, this overcasted uh, Spirit Leech. So one shot. I mean, look at that. It's just it's just brutal. Now the help it's obviously going to break two army losses, or we could just you know for style points shoot it with the Amber Bow. But you like if I had just had Skulk in this test, he would have gotten like insta gibbed. Like if I my focus fire and my initial investments like so Skaven players would obviously have to screen and do other things like that. But it is just so damn powerful. So anyways, guys, that's the first test. I just want to show you the potential of this little goon squad. I do think it's going to be very, very good in multiplayer. And despite, you know, there is some micro required, but you can bring other assets. You could, If you want to go crazy, you could bring like a Luminarch of Heish and bring the Temple off Luminarch to get additional nets on top of his. Like there are so many strategies. And from the campaign I played, I played a couple, you know, a couple rounds here and there of a Marx's campaign. Once you do get to the later campaign, he's able to goon things so hard if you synergize correctly with an Amethyst Wizard and some of the other tools. So that's the first test of the day. It's going to be the Marcus Goon Squad. You guys are going to be seeing this quite a bit multiplayer first. There are plenty of ways to counter it, but uh, again, just be aware. If you see this kind of synergy here in this combination of units, Hammer the Witches, you know, notwithstanding, I mean, that's not like a super essential part. It's going to be very strong. So that's part one, guys. And now we're going to be jumping over to our second test, and we'll see you in a second. All right, my friends, and now we're back with the second test of the day, which is going to feature the Huntsman General and his firebombing. So I have to tell you guys, of all the different synergies and kind of new units, I think that this is my favorite combination, and I just love using this in multiplayer. It's certainly quite good in campaign as well. So what you do is you get the Huntsman General, and it basically is just a synergy with his spells. He has the arrow of Akshai here, which does fire damage, but more importantly, the Hail of Fire gives a reload skill and fire damage to all nearby troops. So... It's the beginning of this glorious synergy. So you give them fire damage, you give them reload, reload skill, and then you throw the oil flask at your intended target. So this is going to slow them by 50%, which alone is very competitive. I mean, being able to slow something by 50% is very, very strong. It's not the most accurate spell, but it's still very good. So it also applies 50% flame weakness to that target, which is incredible. You get the Bright Wizard, you use Kindle Flame. So you cast the Flaming Sword of Ruin on your archers, your gun line, and you get Kindle Flame. So whenever you cast a spell with him, it basically gives all near, oh, all enemies on the map 22% fire weakness. So 22% plus the weakness from his uh, flask here, which is going to be a total of 72%, is huge. That is like a huge, huge damage buff. So that synergizes with, you know, the Huntsmen, the Handgunners, if you give them fire damage. But more importantly, the big juicy combination is the Templehof Luminarch. This is so awesome. The Templehof already does fire damage, so you just need to get that flask and time it correctly. And, I mean, just imagine that multiplier, uh, multiplier of like 70% on the missile damage, which is 1,462. It is relatively tough to pull off, but if you can, you can literally like one shot pretty much like anything. It is so awesome. Now there's a couple other ways to kind of further accentuate this. I don't know if it's super necessary, but basically, for example, you could get the uh, the Warrior Priest, give him the Banner of Eternal Flame, and he's going to be imbuing fire damage to these guys. So if you don't feel like using the Bright Wizard and you just want to use a different caster, you can still get a little bit of a hint of that synergy by using uh, the uh, Warrior Priest, which we'll use for this test. So we're going to be testing it out against the uh, Iro Titan here, which is, you know, a big armored construct. So the Huntsmen, of course, don't have the best AP. We'll mix in some handgunners and just, you know, show you guys the real punch that this build can pack. On top of that, we're going to have a Tomb King here. He's going to be waddling just so uh, he doesn't, you know, charge us while we're doing the testing because unfortunately no one was online right now to uh, help me out with this test. So I'm having to do it, do it live. But yeah, a lot of other strategies coming in. This video, like I said, is going to be focusing on the Empire. But the second one, I have some very cool Lizardmen strategies as well. They have the new slons, they have the fire slon, they have the uh, life slon. And of course, they have all those new beasties and whatnot. So, all right, guys. So let's go ahead and set up for the test. So here in the front, we're going to put the handgunners. Handgunners do obviously have obstruction issues. So for example, if the handgunners were in the back row and they were like right behind my bows, for example, they might not be able to make great contact. So you're going to want to put those guys in the front. The warrior priest does have the banner, which is going to be imbuing fire damage. So just in case we screw up with our our lord and forget to give the fire damage, uh, you know, it's going to be okay. So let's go like this. The bows in the back, you want them, for the sake of this test, you want them relatively tightly packed just so they can make sure to all get the buffs. And that should be good. Target. We'll have the Temple Meme Luminarch running interference just to, you know, making sure the test goes well. So let's go ahead and take take off fire at will. We'll do it here as well. And let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's catch some Tomb Kings. Let's wrangle them uh, them beasties here. So the Iro Titan here, we're going to drag it out into the Shadow Realm. Of course, that'll be the second part of our test. And thankfully, we're going to be wasting its, its stupid uh, spells. This is what happens when there's nobody online to help you with tests. You just you just got to do it the old-fashioned way. So, yeah, Titan's doing this. We'll drop a net for good measure just to make sure he doesn't catch us. And uh, Fire Will here it looks good. So we'll fast forward now. Titan can just kind of uh, do our thing. So we'll, you know, we'll draw some... Oh, hold on. Can we can we go in circles here? Oh, it, it, I thought you could go in, like, infinite circles. That would be really funny. 
All right, so the big pop is coming in here. This is gonna be the main test. So we're gonna drop the oil flask here on him in just a second. So let's go ahead and do this and make sure that we make contact. It's not the most, you know, accurate. So sometimes it can't actually miss even from this range. And here it comes and does it make contact? It does. So now he is weak to fire. So if you go ahead and look at him, <laughs> he's like, screw this, this sucks. So for a period of time, he's gonna be having minus 50% speed. So now he's very, very slow at 17 speed and he's also a weak to fire damage. So this is this is the time to shine here. So we're gonna cast the Flaming Sword of Rune right here, which is gonna be good. This guy is gonna be casting uh, this spell. So he's a little bit out of range here. So we'll pull, we'll pull him back. But I mean, it's just reload skill. Everybody already has fire damage. We'll just pop that anyways. And then he's gonna be using his uh, fire arrow as well. So all those different juicy buffs are gonna be going off. Kindle Flame's gonna be going off and we can unleash hell here. It's gonna be good. So we just wait a second. We we're gonna wait for the Kindle Flame to go down. So the Kindle Flame is now active and now we just fire with everything. So just watch this burst damage come in, guys. It's gonna be nasty. So the bows come in, here it comes. Oh, that's that's so good and tasty. Now, mind you, this guy has a silver shield. So this is this is like just fat damage. And I'm using like Huntsman. I only have a couple AP units and this guy is still just going down into the night here. So very, very brutal damage coming in there. But that's like not the, the most exciting element of the test. The Titan is gonna be the most fun here. So we'll, we'll use like everything, including the Temple Huff on this guy. So basically we got 72% weakness to fire. All of our units do fire damage. That is a huge, huge damage augmentation. Normally like a silver shielded footlord would take a lot more punch to put down, but we put him down in a couple seconds. We were even slow-mo in, in you know, a substantial portion of that test. So here we do have a little bit of time. So we're gonna kind of fall back here. Let's do this, do this. And we just gotta make sure we get our cooldown. So we're gonna go corner camp against EAI. I'm sure, I'm sure it's gonna love this. Make sure everybody's, uh, they're all fresh for the most part. Yeah, we can we can cruise it. We have another net coming up, so we could net if we want to, but I don't think we're gonna have to worry. Cooldown should be coming up in a couple seconds, and I think we're good to go. Cool. So the Titan's coming in. Let's go ahead and position you, position you. And here comes Form Ranks, here comes the Titan. The Titan cometh. He's certainly pissed off, but thankfully for the sake of this test, since it's just him, we can actually just net him in place, which is uh, which is gonna be good. So once he does get in the range, the firebox here, we'll make sure to do that. So this guy has 100 armor, uh, no basic missile resist or anything else like that. So he's certainly, you know, a very, very good choice uh, choice meal here. It looks like we're a little bit out of range here. So we could actually switch spots here and have you go here. And it looks like everybody's happily in range. So we'll go ahead and drop a net for the sake of this test to make sure we don't miss with our freaking vial. And net has gone down. So let's go ahead and pause it. Actually, we can make sure we make contact with the uh, jar first. Come on, don't fail me, Hunts Marshal General. <sighs> okay, that was a solid contact. So now he's weak to fire by quite a bit. As you guys know, we do have the Warrior Priest. I'm buffing with the fire, but we're going to do Flaming Sword of Ruin just to get the Kindle Flame synergy. And uh, we'll do the Hammer of Sigmar just to make things extra spicy. So, all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and start the test here. So Flaming Sword of Ruin is going to be going down from the Wizard. We'll cast this, and then everyone's just going to open up on him here. So we should have an adequate amount of firepower. We'll get the Temple of Luminar shooting. And we'll also cast Fireball just to keep the Kindle Flame synergy going. So, I mean, just watch the damage. It's going to be awesome. Oh my god, it's going to... Look at the burst damage! <laughs> just look at it. Just look at it. Oh, is the Temple off even going to get to shoot? <laughs> okay, oh, dude. Now, that was in slow-mo. If that was real time, that would have been like an instant kill. Which is pretty awesome. So hopefully you guys got to enjoy this test. I thought it was pretty fun. Sorry about the technical difficulties, but again, in early access, it's not as easy to get people because only a couple of people have a, you know, have you know are, on, are online at any given time. So, yeah, that's a really strong synergy. And obviously, I just showed you guys a very like extreme version of it where I have all the advantages. If you're actually using it in like multiplayer, you basically want to have the Hunts Marshals General, like a Bright Wizard or some sort of a Wizard with a Snare, and maybe like three Huntsmen. That's enough to really like punish like lightly armored monsters or even big monsters. They can do some work. And you can use those with handgunners as well against like factions like Chaos. If Colex coming in just with a full shove, right, you can counter punch them really good with a couple handgunners, a flask and some fire damage. It can do the work of the gods. So that shall conclude our video for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed getting to see the uh, Marcus Goon Squad as well as our Huntsman General uh, fire tactics. Definitely quite a bit of fun. So in the next video, guys, we're going to be exploring tactics for the lizard men, looking at the Nakai Bull Rush. Nakai is a very, very good character for like flanking and heavy flank overloads because of his uh, essentially Fury of Cain type ability he has. He has an ability that gives uh, everybody nearby melee attack and physical resist. Man, he can make some very, very scary lizard uh, goon squads. So guys, second video is going to be coming in the next couple days. And again, it'll have lizard men stuff. So we'll be exploring combos with the Dreadsaurian, Nakai, and all that good stuff. So guys, thank you so much for joining and we'll see you guys on the other side. Take care.